The next section is going to continue um, our chi-squared tests for two-way tables. This time we're doing the test of independence. And um, the test of independence is going to be used when we have only one sample but multiple variables. And this is going to be used when we are trying to determine if there is an association between two variables. So um, when I say association, that is another word for a relationship between two variables. Okay, so um, these are actually, the entire process is exactly the same as the previous one, homogeneity, the number, there are two differences. The first difference is the, um, is the hypotheses. So our null hypothesis is that there is an association, I'm sorry, that there is no association between the two. And um, another way you're sometimes gonna see this written you sometimes are going to see this written as the two variables are independent. I actually don't care how you write this. Write it in a way that works, that makes sense for you. The alternative hypothesis is that there is an association between whatever two variables you have. And in other words, they are not independent. So, um, so that's the number one difference between this one and homogeneity. The second difference for this one and homogeneity is how the data is gathered. In this one, there's only gonna be one sample. Um, with homogeneity, we always had two separate independent samples. Okay, so here they ask us, is there a relationship between gender and relative finger length? So we actually, I think we did this together in class, we did this example. Um, and they wanted to see for each, they looked at the gender of each student and they wanted to know which finger was longer, um, the index finger or the ring finger. So um, you'll see the data here. Actually for parts A and B, I would like you to do them on your own. These are, um, I think part A is from chapter, I believe it's chapter four. Part B is from chapter one, so please just do it on your own. Okay, so we're gonna go straight into part C, which is finding the expected counts. And actually finding the expected counts, hopefully for you by now, uh, will seem kind of familiar. Like for example, I'll just do it for one of them and I'll let you do the rest on your own. For the female ring finger, you would do um, the 234, times the 212 all over 452. And when you do that, you are going to end up getting 109.8-ish. Uh, so go ahead, I want you just to do the rest on your own. And please just pause the video and give it a try. So here's, here's the table of it. You'll notice that um, they're filled out in parentheses. If you don't like doing the slash in between, you can do parentheses like this. If you don't like the parentheses, you can do the slash, as long as it's clear which are the observed and which are the expected. Um, and actually, you might have noticed that I just got this exact example from example six. So we're gonna do that one right now. We're gonna just do the complete hypothesis test. So, um, They've given you the expected counts, but know that you do need to find those on your own, generally. Um, they also actually really nicely gave you the null hypothesis. That's rare that they do that. So um, I am gonna write out the hypotheses. And so we're gonna just do the whole entire test. So they ask us, do these data provide convincing evidence of an association between relative finger length for U.S. high school students, between gender and relative finger length for U.S. high school students who filled out the census at school survey? Okay, key word here is association. If you see the word association, that is very likely that it, uh, I'm going to tell you that you're using a chi-squared test of independence. 
Um, even more so if they say, do the data provide convincing evidence? That's a sign of a hypothesis test. If you ever see something like that, it's almost always a sign that is a hypothesis test. Association is almost always a sign that is a chi-squared test of independence. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to start right away with our hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that gender and relative finger length are independent. Or you can say there, are no, there is no association. And then the alternative hypothesis is the same idea, but they're not independent. And um, I think I've warned you about this before, but with chi-squared, make sure that you write your hypotheses in the context of the problem. Um, and so for the second one, you could also say that there is an association. So just make sure that you keep those straight. No association is the same as um, independent. Having an association is the same as not independent. So it's almost opposites. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and do our conditions. Okay, so um, the conditions are almost the same as the previous two things. You'll notice that for the 10% condition, I only checked it for, I checked it once for 452 because this is only one sample. I didn't have multiple samples. Okay, so um, because all the conditions are satisfied, we are going to use a chi-squared test of independence. And um, I'm going to find the degrees of freedom. You don't have to find it right now, but it's going to be 3 minus 1 times 2 minus 1, which gives me 2 times 1. So I'm going to say with 2 degrees of freedom. I usually like to put the degrees of freedom in with the, the test name, um, just as long as you have them in there somewhere. That's fine. So um, to find your chi-squared, I think I mentioned this, this before, uh, you don't need to write out the whole entire formula. I'm just going to write out the first term. Just to get the practice, I would like you to please do it on your own on your calculator. So. Um, and you can go ahead and pause. So then when you do that, you should get that the chi-squared is equal to 29.015. Uh, That's a pretty high chi-squared value. So I'm going to um, find the p-value um, by saying the probability that chi-squared is greater than 29.015 if you do the chi-squared CDF on your calculator, which I think you should probably also do on your own, you get 5 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay, so here we have a bunch of important things here. So the last thing that you're going to do is write your conclusion. And we're going to say the p-value is very low, so because of the low p-value, I reject my null hypothesis. And then there's going to be very strong evidence. Um, of an association. Between gender and finger length.